issue is because of some issues and changes in which the economy will need to respond to. Um, maybe one just to sort of fly up on one, two, seven, preparedness for the integration transformation from that called the Better Care Fund. So how you are, as an authority through the health and wellbeing board and your partner in health, preparing for sort of implementation of uh, that funding, 15, 16, and some quite specific timelines and plans that need to be put in place. Um, and then moving on to 129, some specifics around local authority accounting code of practice. The firm are running some workshops with SIPFA, uh, which the authority are invited to in terms of sort of technical workshops about changes to the accounting codes of practice and there are a couple of bullet points on that page which uh, just point to which have been around for a while uh, around infrastructure assets so your roads and how they're accounted for things of that nature which uh, SIPRA have been trying to get to grips with for some time and similarly the sort of accounting for some aspects of uh, schools which we've had some discussion with here before uh, and then just over the, over the page probably one which we, we may well end up having some more discussion with the authority back in detail is around accounting for property plans and equipment and the valuation of those, those assets but I said they're relatively technical matters and, and members of the finance team will come to the training session we're running in conjunction with SIPA going forward. Happy to take any questions, observations on that one. Item nine is a certification report, which is really just a summary of the work we've done around grant claims. Um, for, for new members on page 136, it just sets up the, the sort of introduction and the summary to this. Uh, the grant claims that we're required to review and certify on behalf of the Audit Commission are specified by the Audit Commission. If you go back probably three, four, five years, a number of those were probably a dozen or more. We've been focusing on just really the big ones. So, now there are three claims, um, the housing benefit claim, the uh, NNDR claim and the teacher's pension and, and the values of those are given in the appendix of the report but in total those three claims are £252, £52 million worth of public money so uh, the Commission specified in conjunction with the Government Department some quite specific tests that need to be undertaken in relation to those uh, and, and page 136 just sets out our responses and, and your performance in relation to those. Um, the colours don't come out as well in, in grey as they do in the uh, original version, but the dots on the left, the right hand side of the box are green, amber, green. So in, in a sense, uh, in terms of submission and certification of the working papers, then two of the claims are on time. The teacher's pension return this year was a particular issue for, for many authorities because of changes that happened across, across the piece in relation to the introduction level of contributions. Um, in terms of the accuracy of the claim forms, there is no level of materiality, they're either right or wrong, so we do some quite specific testing which is set up by the Audit Commission and they set the sort of sample sizes and, and so we, we report down to the individual pound level almost. Um, so, and there are some quite specific tests we have to do and if the sort of testing failed in any place and there's a qualification letter that needs to be issued and sent back and that is quite a detailed letter particularly in relation to the housing benefit claims. So, so there were some qualification letters uh, and some changes to the claims and they're, they're sort of highlighted in that table. Uh, and then the rest of the report just gives a little bit more detail about sort of performance over the, um, the last couple of years and some of the, the very detail around the housing benefit claim which is in a, in a detail that group members wanted any further information on that. Uh, at the beginning of the meeting, members will receive uh, a revised Appendix C, which is the fees. Uh, at the time of writing the report, we're still gathering the information around that. Um, we're required to um, agree with the Audit Commission because they set the fees for us. And if there's any change to the fees, that either up or down, we still need to uh, agree with those with the Audit Commission. So you will see from the revised table that uh, the fee for 2012-13 indicative was £42,600, the actual fee was £39,818 uh, and then the final column and the first column were really just a, a comparison against last year's fee. So sort of there has been a significant downward trend in, in 
using the sort of fees as, as charged uh, and as required by the audit commission. Um, officers have responded to the issues and recommendations and there is an action plan with, with some plans to get it that's it. So I can take any questions or observations in relation to that report.